All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, what we're going to do, it's going to be a lot quicker, lot, uh, less quality of a video, but I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to use the brush tool in Affinity Photo. It can be applicable to Photoshop. I believe that most of the instructions are the same. I transferred from Photoshop over to Affinity, and the transition was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But I'm going to show you the different parts of the brush tool that you may or may not know of or know what they do at this stage. Uh, and you can become great and fantastic like me and create stuff like you see on the back of my wall if you want to purchase any of them uh, just get in touch i have a website link down below and all that stuff so let's get into the tutorial all right so now we're in infinity photo what we're going to do is we're going to select the brush tool i already have it selected here you can select it by actually clicking on the little paint brush icon here there's a couple of different selections on the inside we're just going to use the paintbrush tool i will do a tutorial in the future on the other bits and pieces in here uh, or you can press b on the keyboard and it'll bring you straight there and you can also cycle through the different options as you can see it change in there uh, by clicking B a couple of times and it'll eventually bring you back to the paintbrush tool or you can set a shortcut on your drawing tablet or whatever you have and that'll bring you to paintbrush tool too so when you select it you get this toolbar up the top that has paintbrush tool only uh, options up here if I selected the lasso tool here you'd have different options up the top keep it on the paintbrush tool and you will be able to have just the paintbrush tools up in the, up in the ribbon or the tabs whatever you want to call them so of course you've got the the main ones are going to be your width, your opacity, your flow. I'll put everything on 100% just to show you what that looks like. Uh, and the hardness, obviously. So that's just going to look like that. It's just a hard circle, just simple like that. Uh, obviously, the width is going to be the size of it. So I increase the width of it. It's going to increase here. So, you know, different sizes. Opacity is how see-through something is. You can set it as layers and stuff like that. And bring the opacity down. Flow and hardness are things that I use the most. So with hardness, of course, you saw that I have a nice hard edge there. If I bring that all the way down to 0%, there you go. You got the two things beside each other there. The 100% hardness puts an even amount of ink, let's call it. Let's just call it ink. It's just easier to describe. Even amount of ink across the whole circle size that you had decided on. When you have the hardness down to zero or anywhere between zero and hundred, obviously, it was it will start off in the center as your hundred percent black or whatever it is, and slowly dissipate out into nothing. It'll slowly fade. But the flow, what the flow is, it is that if it's hundred percent flow, obviously it's going to be hundred percent black. Think of it as about how much ink you are letting out of your pen or how much paint you're letting off your your paintbrush so if i douse it in black i'm letting 100 percent of that black ink just go onto the page like that but if i only let about 50 percent uh, on it'll only do 50 percent of how much you know ink is being allowed out of the pen at the same time and you're also able to layer in that instance so you get a nice bit of a smooth transition me using flow and hardness is one of the most important things in my uh, graphic designs doing sports because of the lighting and shadows it is always a soft brush going across so it starts off, you know, obviously bright on one side of my face here because I have my light over here and it just slowly fades over to the shadows where I have the darkness over on this side. It is not a harsh line straight down the middle of my face, which is obviously why we'd use the softness of the brush in these cases. So those are just the three quite simple tools on this and everyone should be using them and stuff. And obviously then opacity, I bring opacity down here and it fades it even more. It seems to have a similar effect to the flow. I can layer it, but it's just at 50% opacity instead. I would rather use the flow and hardness tools in this than using the opacity because you can change opacity over here in the layers panel. The ideal thing that I like to do is I go between 10 and 20%, whatever it is, and that's how I like to layer up on my players to create those lighting effects that you see on my Instagram. If you don't follow me there, do because it's great. But that's where I like to do because you don't do too much. Uh, it's very easy to add more shadows and stuff like that, but very difficult to take them away in, in a precise manner and you'd end up having to redo the whole layer again. Obviously nothing's permanent. It's Photoshop, so you're able to just undo, probably Sunshade Photoshop, it's Affinity Photo, but you can always just undo in this sort of world, but I would rather only have to do it the once instead of having to do it multiple times. So me doing it patiently with a low flow lets me get my shading and shadowing right. I'll put a, like a picture on the screen of an Im image that I did shadowing properly on, uh, but that is what I use it for. Now, as you go across this ribbon here, I'll just delete all that off. Uh, as you go across this, ribbon here we got more i'm going to go into that in a second this is as it says on the screen force pressure to control size when disabled size is contributed controlled by brush defaults so i'd be able to use this because i have one of these pens and it would actually decide 
how big the brush is depending on how much pressure I put in. I'll just up the flow here so you can actually see what I'm doing. But as you can see, see the brush size is way bigger than what the dot is at the moment. But if I go across and I put more pressure down on my brush, it'll increase in size. So I can stay real small like that or I can slowly add pressure and it'll grow. That's what that's for. I don't tend to use it a lot, but it's generally very good for digital painting, digital artwork like that when I'm doing uh, composites not really as necessary. Uh, then we got a stabilizer tool here. I'm gonna actually up the hardness on, on this a bit so you can see it a bit better. What the stabilizer does, it'll help you go on a continuous line. So if I just down the size of this a little bit, I am not, when you're dragging it along yourself, you are not the steadiest of people. There'll be bumps in the road and all that. When you obviously have the stabilizer on, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. So I'll just click the checkbox, put the stabilizer on. It'll bring this little cursor out and it'll actually drag it in a nice smooth line no matter where I go and all that stuff. And you can set the different length of your thing. And then there's just a different way of doing it, which kind of averages out a bit more. It's a bit more mad, doesn't follow it directly. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of these things, but if you can find a way to do it, see the way the drawing follows you. I'll delete that again. See the way the paintbrush actually follows you there. And it doesn't exactly go to where your cursor used to go. You're like dragging a ball on a rope behind you and it's just following you in your position. Not an incredibly useful tool to me, but if you can find it used to that, uh, do, of course. Oh, that was the, this is the length of the leash that, it, that it's actually on. Uh, I just had it on, that's just long. Symmetry tool, pretty useful tool if you want to use it. Uh, obviously this is just done on the one so it will automatically just do that for you yeah so it'll just copy it across across it if you want to properly mirror it you click the mirror checkbox up here and it'll just put it exactly on the other side of this there is a way to do this and this you can move it around and all that good stuff you will be able to rotate it and if you want to do more than one you just up this it's at eight now and look all in perfect and if I take the mirror off there you go so if that's a great simple way to put patterns onto a drawn if ever needs be and you can actually just do it like that something mad but a very very useful tool and you can put obviously whatever number you want on here so a very very useful tool the symmetry tool and you got the mirror of your lock and you can set the blend mode of everything like that there's this thing called wet edges that if you actually hold it on you can see it there it's like I'm just pushing it out we go hardness 100 that's the end of what that looks like i'll take off symmetry now to stop annoying everyone and then we have protect alpha which i am actually unsure protect alpha is a tool that i've never used outside of gaussian blur what would which i'll go through blurring tools in the future is what happens when you're trying to blur something and you know the edges of the actual image itself blur out and dissipate itself whereas when you protect the alpha you're protecting the image outline contour itself so it actually will not blur the edges you'll keep your hard line while the middle is blurred anyway i've found a couple of uses for that in the past with blur but i've never found a use for it with the brush now what we're going to do is we're going to head straight back into the more tab up here which is actually just basically a window of you know all the other tools and a couple of extras that you're liking tool and there's this you've got a preview here of what your brush is going to look like so you've got your size slider here. Of course, you can see exactly what it's gonna look like when you do a stroke length. Uh, the accumulation there, as you can see, you can set the different percentage of it. It's coming up. You got your hardness that I've already explained to you. So we're setting the softness of the edges. Spacing. So each one of these, as your stroke goes along, the computer is actually putting a certain distance between them. If I increase the spacing, there'll be, obviously, the circle will be more spaced apart. If I decrease it, uh, it'll be a smoother line. There won't be bumps like you may be able to see on the edge here But the issue with that comes along when you put the hardness down and you're trying to put the low flow That actually just comes out as a dark spot anyway So you'd want to keep your spacing up a little bit. You probably want your spacing around there So you're actually able to do successful Shadowing which is why mine is kind of set up the way they are at the moment And then you've got the shape here which will turn it into more of a ellipse shape rather than your fully fledged circle 
or whatever it is it'll just narrow down the shape but we're just concentrating on the round brush at the moment so it'll create a more elliptical shape very good for ground shadows and anything like that but you also have the rotation to worry about where you can rotate it a full 180 degrees so you kind of get catch every orientation that you need and even if it's something weird brush that you especially you can always rotate it in the image afterwards and again you have your blend mode your wet edges and and something to associate your brush custom to a tool then you can reset it to the factory settings you can double it and stuff so when you're saving these brushes out it'll be fine we got dynamics here which is quite an interesting tab uh, these things called jitters and scatters along the x and all this stuff makes the brush stroke not linear anymore so obviously this is all a very uniform shape going the whole way along it's not going to change it's always going to be brush size 43.5 which is what it is up in the top corner so if i increase the size jitter it'll increase the difference obviously of size as you're going along the stroke as you go up to 100 percent and it'll, you got pressure you got random you got different sort of things to go through on different ones then accumulation jitter is how much it obviously accumulates in one place it'll be a turn out blotchy flow jitter so how heavy the flow is as you're going along the stroke line rotation shader it's not going to matter about a circle but when you are your different shapes or you've got different things maybe you're doing a special brush of a leaf or something like that and you don't want everything just to be the exact same you want one here one here one here one here that's where these sort of things matter which i will show you in a second uh, you got to scatter along the x-axis you got to scatter along the y-axis which all brings it along which you can probably see how i do some of my faded dot effects got the hardness jitter like any other ones it's the flow and then it's it's the hardness softness of the brush it'll go from 100 hardness to zero percent uh shape jitter there you are you've got it some of them are compressed some of them are stayed circular and again you can set all these either at random or pressure or whatever and then when it's working with colors you've got your hue jitter saturation jitter luminosity jitter that's only works when you're in colors not when you're in black and white you can import your own texture so if you want brush textures or anything like that you can import them here and sub brushes which you can add a bitmap of a jpeg that you've done before so one of my ones let's say just this wasp there you are as you can see here i've added what's called a bitmap to that brush selection which is why you got that there is a wasp in my circle basically see a current nozzle blend whatever and you can do that here so an example of where you would use these jitters or scatters across the x and y as you can see this all kind of set up here at the moment is when you're making leaves falling leaves or something like that now this is not going to be perfect god forbid do not judge my falling leaf ability uh, from this one setup but you just kind of go along and it'll do the different sizes for you you don't have to worry about resizing any of these or anything like that you don't have to worry about the different sizes or anything like that you can just input and do a brush stroke going along and it'll add the leaves of different sizes for you and that can either create nice patterns in behind and give a bit of a randomness to them because no matter how much you try sometimes you're not able to do like random geometric patterns or stuff like that going along in a brush stroke you always tend to try and make something that makes sense if you want true randomness this is a good way of doing it and it might add nice backgrounds in sports graphic designs or something like that you're not necessarily making wildlife portraits or maybe you are and you stumbled across this video but that is absolutely everything i know about the brush tool hopefully that was a nice walkthrough for you and you've kind of understood a bit more understood what a bit, couple more of the tools do and how they look if there are any other questions about the brush tool please ask them down below if you liked it if you enjoy these kind of videos or if you want to see more sports graphic design or whatever you want to see let them know let me know down below and of course like the video if you enjoy any sort of graphic design stuff follow the channel there is going to be a design challenge coming out soon to do with the lions tour which i'm quite excited about i'm halfway through doing the do the work for it i decided that i want to try put out this video to see if we could manage doing two videos a week a bit mental i know that's why i'm putting this at the end so people who don't want to listen don't have to and of course follow me on instagram twitch subscribe to me on youtube here i've already mentioned it and yeah have a good one hope you enjoyed it good luck